So I tried to go live on my phone, but it didn't let me for some reason, which is annoying. But anyway, I am here, so I'm just going to bring up the group on my phone so I can check for... Um, any comments okay so today i want to share with you something that drastically helped me to understand myself and my role in this and also the dynamics of what was playing out and it is the fantastic drama triangle and you might have heard of this before if you have great if not this hopefully will be as much of a game changer for you as it was for me so in your workbook today i've included the drama triangle essentially what it is is it's three roles the abuser the rescuer and the victim and in your current situation roles have been assigned for each of you so you your ex children professionals You've all been given one of those three roles. And it's important that you understand that. Because not, nothing within this triangle is healthy. Not one of those roles is helpful or healthy. And the key is to get out of that triangle. It's not about shifting your role or shifting your perception of the role. It is about getting out of the of the triangle completely for yourself first of all so the abuser or persecutor fairly easy to identify with you would think but as we know some abusers like to play the victim and this is where it gets confusing because if they're playing the victim what role does that mean that you play? So it's an opportunity for you to look at the role you think you're playing, the role you think your ex is playing, and also what role is actually being played out here, as in what is being presented. And then it's being accountable for that. So there's, there's um, behaviours that associated with each of these three roles. So the persecutor or the abuser is angry, both openly and passively. So if you feel you have anger, how's that coming out? How's that being expressed, particularly as part of this process? Now, there is nothing wrong with anger as an emotion. It's how we express it and how we understand it, what we do with that. Aggressive, judgmental, bullying, demanding, spiteful and scornful. So take a step back and think, am I doing any of those? Consciously, unconsciously, even when you don't like what you've done, own it. Own it and say, you know what, sometimes I am that. Sometimes I am those things. Rescuer. A lot of you are probably finding this one being the most um, relevant to you. So appears self-sacrificing, self over-helpful and facilitative, likes to be needed, prone to meddling and um, prone to meddling unnecessarily and engulfing. The core need in that is I want to be loved, I want to be needed, because if I'm needed, then people will stay in my life. And you find that, we're going to look at codependency in a minute, because some, you know, the rescuer is also known as a codependent in my eyes. And so, as a rescuer myself, or reforming rescuer, I like to, uh, I'm definitely conscious of those behaviours and, and mindful that I don't play them, because I've studied the drama triangle um, and it's not a pattern I want to repeat. But it's recognising the times when I have and I have done it a hell of a lot. And what it really means is I don't value the other person enough to help themselves. I know better. 
I know better than them, so I'm going to take control here. And it is a controlling, quite manipulative process. It does, it, it, at the time, it doesn't feel like it. It feels like you're doing it with good intentions. But like I say, through reflection of my own behaviours, I can see that it, it wasn't always. There was elements of manipulation, which that can tip me over. That can tip me over into that abuser role because I'm judging. I'm, I'm, I'm telling someone... No, 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 you're doing it wrong. You don't do it like that. You should be doing this. So it's a fine line between those. It's not as clear cut as we necessarily think. The third role is the victim. So in this role, actually, you could be manipulative, have that poor me syndrome. Helpless and needy, complaining and whinging, fretful, downtrodden blaming others and what this really means is that you don't value yourself and you look to others for um confirmation for validation so you can easily see that you probably danced around a few of those i know for sure i have a hundred percent so in your exercise in your workbook today that's what i want you to do is i want you to reflect upon the times and the behaviors that you have been the victim, the abuser, and the rescuer. No judgment. Be kind to yourself. Be compassionate to yourself. This is about self-awareness. This is about knowing when you do something, you can now go, oh, I'm slipping into victim mode, or I'm slipping into rescue, or I'm slipping into abuser mode, and going, I don't want to do that anymore. I'm going to change my behavior. I'm going to shift myself out of this. And so it's not about condoning yourself for your past behaviours. It's about recognising the role that you have played. Um, and so I found that incredibly powerful for me. It was a really great place for me to start my healing. Because once I was able to recognise, okay, so a lot of the time I'm the rescuer. I'm also the victim. I've also I have spent time in victimhood. But I've also spent time in abuser bill. I've been that person that has tried to control the situation out of fear. But because, but still, it was abusive. And I own that and I recognise that. And it's about me not wanting to make those choices. So this exercise, like I say, is about that self-awareness that you want to be different. You want your life to be different. This situation is not comfortable for you. And in a co-parenting relationship, you're gonna, your ex is going to want to play you in these roles because it doesn't know any better. Your ex doesn't know any better than this because this was their childhood. And maybe yours too. But you have the hindsight and the um, self-discipline and the willingness to want a different life for you and for your children. Because if you're, if it's your, your exes and it's your past it's going to be your children's past as well they're going to it's going to be your children's future sorry they are going to live this in the future so break the triangle now so that they don't and so it's about choosing differently making different choices for you healing from recognizing if you're a rescuer i don't i can make my own needs i don't need to be needed and I trust other people to meet their own needs. I'm empowering them to meet their own needs. And you know what? This is sometimes with our kids as well. You can be a rescuer parent. That's why engulfing is on there. When you're a rescuer parent, you don't trust your child. You don't trust your child to, to take care of themselves and to meet their own needs and that they've got the strength and the resilience. Now, I'm not saying you abandon them. And I'm not saying that you lead them to just get on with it. But... There is a huge difference between being a rescuer and being engulfing to being supportive and, and meeting their needs. There is a huge difference. And if you're not sure of what those differences are, join us on our Circle of Security program in January. It will all become so much clearer. And as we go through this week, some of these things might start to fall into place for you as well. But the Circle of Security will really help you to move past these behaviours and to really parent from a place where of reparenting because you know none of us have 
perfect childhoods. We all have needs that weren't met. Um, and so it's an opportunity for you to reparent yourself and step out of this triangle. So yeah, today, today's topic is the drama triangle. So that's your exercises. Now I'm not here tomorrow because it's my brother's birthday. So we're having a family get together. So I'm going to cover tomorrow's um, topic right now as well. Um, and that is codependency. It, it also follows on that nicely. So that um, rescuer role and victim, but also the abuser as well. They, they, that triangle really is represented very well in the codependency um, construct. I definitely am a recovering codependent. And I, it's for me, it's not just about people. A substance. I, I've drunk in the past. I've eaten. Food has been part of that. Um, and so it's even being obsessively going to the gym. I, I did. I went through year two years of obsessively going to the gym. It's a codependent trait because I need something outside of me to make me feel good. I depend upon something or someone else that co i depend now it's that this is not talking about being ultra independent and not needing or wanting anything but codependency is that need that primal need that uh, ultimately thinking i can't get through i can't survive life without someone or something to aid me and you can see how that plays into an abusive relationship because you're going in thinking I desperately need someone to care for and care about me. That's the underlying thing as well. Um, and they're going, I need someone to take care of me. And so you, boom, there you go. Perfect match. You care for them and they take all your care. Obviously, we don't just want to take, we don't just want to take care of someone. We want to be taken care of as well. But there's no give or take in those relationships. It's all, they take, 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 you give, give, give. And that's why it feels so uncomfortable because actually what you want is the equal one. You want, yes, you want to take care of your partner, but you want to be taken care of in return. But in codependency, it's not like that. And it, it, the term codependency came about through Alcoholics Anonymous um, and, and their 12 step program because people become codependent on alcohol and the person their partner is also in that triangle as well. So it all, it all, these all fit together well because the person, the enabler, the codependent, the partner doesn't want them to drink, but isn't prepared to walk away from that relationship because they feel that this person needs them. And if they don't stay, then God knows what will happen to them. And that's kind of where, where we are with people. You know, if you end up in these sort of relationships, that's part of our thinking. And it can pass on to our children. We can have that same thought. I don't know what I'd do without my kids. Oh my God, you know, when they're not here, it's terrible. This is also a, a, a form of codependency. What, so what I've provided for you is, it's um, a psychological questionnaire around codependency. It's just 20 questions and it will give you a score just to give you an idea, you know, if you're not quite sure, am I codependent, am I not? And ultimately the score isn't that important. What it's about is I want you to read the questions and really reflect upon them. This is about you understanding you. How did you get here? How is this impacting my co-parenting relationship? How is this impacting my parenting relationship with my child? How is this in impacting my relationship with myself? And so reflect upon each of those questions and re don't just give it a score. Reflect and think, what does this question mean? What's it bringing up for me? Can I think of times when this question applies? And it's just a really good way. The more we understand ourselves, the more we can make different choices. When we get into these relationships, we're doing it on a subconscious level. We're meeting needs that we don't even consciously know we've got. And so when we bring them to the surface with these exercises, we're able to stop 
behaving from an unconscious perspective and start living our lives more consciously and making choices that are more aligned with the life that we really want rather than the pre-programmed life and the pre-programmed script that we have been living on. So really powerful day today for self-awareness. Not the most comfortable thing and people might balk at this week i accept that but for those of you that are really committed to living a different life and to ultimately giving your children a different life this is the week where real change happens or has the potential to happen if you do the work so tomorrow no not tomorrow because i'm not here tomorrow the day after we're going to look at trauma bond and cognitive dissonance and again this all plays in they all flow. I've written it quite well. So it flows, um, but it just adds to your understanding and again, helps you to make choices about how you want your life to be. So there you go. Um, I'm just gonna see if there's any questions. Okay, so I'm gonna end it there. I hope that this is recorded okay. I hope you can hear me okay. Um, any questions, pop them below. But very powerful work if you do it. And I'll pop the resources up now. Take care, everyone. Bye.